Welcome to BioScholar. In today's video, we'll be exploring one of the most fundamental metabolic pathways in biology, glycolysis. Glycolysis is the process by which our cells break down glucose to produce energy. We'll walk through each step of glycolysis, discussing the key enzymes, intermediate compounds, and energy carriers involved. By the end of this video, you'll have a comprehensive understanding of how glucose is converted into pyruvate, generating ATP and NADH in the process. So, let's dive into the fascinating world of glycolysis. Glycolysis comes from the Greek words glyco and lysis, where glyco means sugar and lysis means splitting. Thus, glycolysis refers to the splitting of sugar. This process breaks down the sugar we consume into energy, supporting various cellular processes. Formally, glycolysis is defined as the metabolic pathway that converts glucose into pyruvate, generating small amounts of ATP and NADH in the process. Glycolysis is a series of 10 enzyme-catalyzed reactions. It is the first step in cellular respiration and fermentation. This process is anaerobic, meaning it does not require oxygen. It takes place in the cytoplasm of both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Before we dive into the steps of glycolysis, let's talk about what we need to get started. Glycolysis is a series of reactions, and at each stage, different molecules play crucial roles. First off, we need a substrate, and in this case, it's glucose, the simple sugar we get from our food. Next, we require various enzymes. These enzymes act like little helpers that speed up each step of the process, ensuring everything runs smoothly. We also need energy carriers. These molecules, like ATP and NAD, are essential for providing the energy needed to drive the reactions forward. And of course, all of this takes place within the cell. Specifically, glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm, which is the fluid-filled area inside the cell. So, to recap, for glycolysis to occur, we need glucose, enzymes, energy carriers, and the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, let's move towards the process. As we go through the steps, notice how many ATP molecules are used and how many are produced at the end and tell me in the comments section. In the first step, an enzyme named hexokinase phosphorylates glucose to trap it in the cell and make it more reactive. A phosphate group is added to glucose, converting it into glucose 6 phosphate. This is called glucose 6 phosphate because the phosphate group is attached to carbon number 6 of glucose. But where does this phosphate group come from? It's donated by an ATP molecule. The ATP molecule is broken down into ADP and a phosphate group. This phosphate group is then attached to glucose, turning it into glucose 6 phosphate. To summarize, glucose plus ATP is converted into glucose 6 phosphate and ADP. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme hexokinase. In the second step of glycolysis, the glucose 6 phosphate produced in the first step undergoes a structural rearrangement to form fructose 6 phosphate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme phosphoglucose isomerase. This isomerization step is important because it converts the 6-membered ring of glucose 6-phosphate into the 5-membered ring of fructose 6-phosphate, making the molecule more suitable for subsequent steps in glycolysis. At the end of this step, we obtain fructose 6-phosphate, an isomer of glucose 6-phosphate, catalyzed by phosphoglucose isomerase. In the third step of glycolysis, Fructose 6 phosphate is phosphorylated to form fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme phosphofructokinase 1, which is one of the key regulatory enzymes in glycolysis. Phosphofructokinase 1 is an allosteric enzyme, meaning its activity can be regulated by other molecules. It is activated by AMP, which signals low energy levels in the cell and inhibited by ATP and citrate, which signal high energy levels. This regulation ensures that glycolysis proceeds when the cell needs energy and slows down when the energy supply is sufficient. In this step, a second ATP molecule is used to add a phosphate group to fructose-6-phosphate, converting it into fructose-1,6-bisphosphate. 
In this molecule, phosphate groups are attached to carbon 1 and carbon number 6. This phosphorylation is crucial as it further activates the sugar molecule, preparing it for the subsequent steps in glycolysis. To summarize, fructose 6 phosphate plus ATP is converted into fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate, and ADP. This reaction is catalyzed by PFK1, a key regulatory enzyme in glycolysis. In the fourth step, the 6-carbon molecule fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is split into two 3-carbon molecules, glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme aldolase. Aldolase performs this cleavage by breaking the bond between the third and fourth carbon atoms of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This step is important because it produces two molecules that can be further metabolized in the subsequent steps of glycolysis. Even though two 3-carbon molecules are produced, only glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate continues directly in the glycolytic pathway. The other product, dihydroxyacetone phosphate, is quickly converted into G3P by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase, ensuring that both molecules produced in this step can be utilized in the pathway. At the end of this stage, we obtain two 3-carbon molecules, and this reaction is catalyzed by aldolase. In the sixth step of glycolysis, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is oxidized and phosphorylated to form 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. The enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase catalyzes this reaction. During this step, NAD is reduced to NADH, capturing energy in the form of high-energy electrons. Additionally, an inorganic phosphate is added to G3P without the use of ATP, forming 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. This step is crucial as it generates NADH, which can be used in oxidative phosphorylation to produce more ATP. To summarize, Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is converted into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate while reducing NAD to NADH. This reaction is catalyzed by glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. In the next step, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is converted into 3-phosphoglycerate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. During this step, a phosphate group from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is transferred to ADP to form ATP. This is an example of substrate-level phosphorylation, where a phosphate group is directly transferred from a substrate molecule to ADP, forming ATP. This step produces two molecules of ATP for each glucose molecule because each glucose molecule generates two molecules of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. At the end of this step, we obtain two 3-phosphoglycerates while generating ATP molecules, which is catalyzed by phosphoglycerate kinase. In the eighth step of glycolysis, 3-phosphoglycerate is converted into 2-phosphoglycerate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase. Phosphoglycerate mutase catalyzes the transfer of a phosphate group from the third carbon to the second carbon of the molecule. This enzyme operates via a mechanism that temporarily adds a second phosphate to the molecule, creating an intermediate called 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate. The enzyme then removes the original phosphate from the third carbon, resulting in the formation of 2-phosphoglycerate. This step is crucial for preparing the molecule for the subsequent dehydration reaction, generating a high-energy compound necessary for ATP production in the next step. At the end of this stage, 3-phosphoglycerate is converted into 2-phosphoglycerate through the action of phosphoglycerate mutase, involving an intermediate formation of 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate. In the ninth step of glycolysis, 2-phosphoglycerate is converted into phosphonolpyruvate. The enzyme anolase catalyzes this reaction. During this step, anolase removes a molecule of water from 2-phosphoglycerate, resulting in the formation of phosphonolpyruvate. Phosphonolpyruvate is a high-energy compound, with a high phosphoryl transfer potential, which is essential for the next step in glycolysis. So, in the end, 2-phosphoglycerate is converted into phosphonolpyruvate through the removal of a water molecule. This reaction is catalyzed by anolase. In the 10th step of glycolysis, 
phosphenol pyruvate is converted into pyruvate. The enzyme pyruvate kinase catalyzes this reaction. During this step, the high energy phosphate group from PEP is transferred to ADP, forming ATP. This is another example of substrate level phosphorylation. The result is the production of pyruvate, which is the end product of glycolysis. This step is crucial as it not only produces ATP, but also forms pyruvate, which can enter the mitochondria for further energy production through the citric acid cycle and oxidative phosphorylation under aerobic conditions, or be converted into lactate under anaerobic conditions. So, finally, in the end, we obtain pyruvate while generating ATP. This reaction is catalyzed by pyruvate kinase. Every metabolic pathway has five key elements. I've discussed these in detail in my previous video. If you're interested in the types of metabolic pathways and how they are regulated, that video will provide valuable insights. Now, let's discuss the elements in glycolysis. As I mentioned, every metabolic pathway has five key elements. In glycolysis, the primary substrate is glucose. Throughout the process, several intermediates are produced, including glucose 6-phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate, and others, ending with pyruvate as the final product. These are the enzymes that catalyze each step, speeding up the reactions. ATP and NADH are the energy carriers involved in glycolysis. ATP is consumed and produced during the process, while NADH is generated. In the end, let's discuss why glycolysis is important. So, Glycolysis is crucial as it is the first step in cellular respiration, providing a quick supply of ATP and NADH for energy needs. It also generates pyruvate, which can be further processed in aerobic respiration or fermentation, making it essential for both energy production and metabolic flexibility in cells. That's it for today. As we went through the glycolysis process, did you notice how many ATP molecules are used and produced? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. In my next video, we will dive into the Krebs cycle. I hope you learned something new today. If you did, please share this video with your friends and subscribe to BioScholar for more videos on metabolic pathways. Thanks for watching.